These days, it's pretty clear that relying solely on battery electric vehicles is a mistake. Full electrification will never be possible, and now car makers are trying to figure out new technologies for achieving sustainability. Options are numerous, and in this video, you will learn about three creative, pretty unique approaches to a greener environment. Here are three new engines that will leave you speechless. In Engine, does this way lead to a greener future? While both politicians and most car makers have only now become aware that a unison approach to zero emissions, which includes EVs only, is impossible, this small startup from Spain has been insisting on a multifaceted approach for years. And they finally came up with a completely new engine, an engine that keeps good old internal combustion alive. The new engine is currently in the late stage of development and the company already started testing it. And the first thing we should definitely talk about is its pretty unique working principle. Namely, the company calls it a one-stroke engine, and we're pretty sure that's already enough to draw your attention. In essence, it's not a one-stroke engine, it's rather a two-stroke unit, but that's still significantly different compared to a gasoline engine you typically find in a modern car. Namely, there are just two movements in the combustion process, but unlike a typical two-stroke engine, which is still in use in various motorcycles, this engine doesn't burn oil. Instead, combustion and lubrication are separated, just like in a typical four-stroke engine. Speaking of four-stroke engines, a typical car unit works something like this. Intake comes first, then there's compression, then combustion, and finally exhaust. With the new engine, there's just compression and combustion, while intake and exhaust come at the same time. At first, you'd think this is some kind of engineering compromise, but in reality, it's actually a great thing, because this engine takes the best of both two- and four-stroke engines. It offers excellent thermal efficiency, but remains refined at the same time. Finally, as we already mentioned, it doesn't combust oil. And how is all this done? Well, it all starts with putting pistons in an opposed setup. In total, there are eight pistons, four on one and four on the other side, which all work in the same chamber. But unlike with traditional engines, there are fixed rods behind with a kind of wave-like oscillating design. So with their rotations, the pistons actually get pressed and released in a perfectly synchronized movement. Such a design has a highly positive impact on the engine's refinement as vibrations are minimized. Also, such a piston design means that the actual engine displacement is smaller. And while all this sounds great, you're probably wondering, what's the catch? What are the downsides? Just like with any other thing, it does come with downsides, and that became pretty clear when the company installed a small 500cc in engine into an old Mazda Miata. The max output was the same as in the original 126 horsepower 1.8 liter inline 4, but on the other hand, what's way below compared to the original engine was the torque so the company needed to install forced induction to compensate. This limitation would suggest that the new engine would hardly be able to be used as a sole source of power. On the other hand, the engine's compact size and reduced weight might be ideal for applications in hybrid technology. They would serve great as power generators, for example. In that way, the engine would save thousands of pounds that would normally come with batteries in the case of EVs, which is easily the biggest flaw of battery electric vehicles. Moreover, such an engine could also also find its place outside the automotive industry, because just like it can feed electric motors with electricity, it can also be an excellent choice for all other kinds of off-grid power generators. Cummins Hydrogen Engine – Future of Heavy Machinery? Hydrogen engines impose themselves as the logical solution when it comes to zero emissions in the commercial sector. It's obvious that batteries and electric motors can't work in hard conditions, so everyone's aware that, when it comes to heavy trucks and similar long-distance transportation, as well as all kinds of machines on construction sites, this is the only way to go if we want to eliminate CO2 emissions. And while car companies like Toyota struggle to impose hydrogen as the main source of energy in the passenger car sector, things are completely different in commercial waters. And that's why Cummins has just come up with its hydrogen engine. It's the next generation B6.7H hydrogen engine, and it's primarily imagined as a unit for the construction industry. And what's particularly interesting is that the new engine was built with minimal modifications, and therefore, cost. 
The company took a well-known engine block from a diesel engine, so the key change was actually the fuel system. Other than that, things remain mostly the same, which significantly increases the potential for practical use. The new engine can easily replace diesel units, as well as its alternatives like biodiesel and natural gas-powered engines. Thanks to the same block, mounting, and overall proportions, the new engine can easily be installed in pretty much every machine that currently uses that diesel version of the Cummins engine. The transmission remains the same, just like cooling systems, hydraulic systems, and other components, so the actual conversion remains pretty simple. The company even claims that maintenance costs would remain the same as in the case of diesel units. In other words, the new hydrogen engine from Cummins is ready to find its place in an impressive range of machinery and the version the company recently presented also shows some quite impressive figures. The max output is rated at 290 horsepower, while the max torque goes all the way up to 885 pound-feet, or if you prefer, 1200 newton meters of torque. Cummins, as well as many experts, sees these engines like this as a sustainable solution that can ensure environmentally friendly operations of all kinds of machinery, including the most challenging applications. And what's also worth mentioning is that Cummins is already addressing the biggest issue that comes with hydrogen-powered engines. Of course, we're talking about storing. Hydrogen needs to be compressed, so the company has already formed a joint venture with a company called Enprox, which is pretty much the leading company on the global scale when it comes to high-pressure hydrogen storage, whether it's about stationary or mobile units. As a result, hydrogen tanks and Cummins-powered machinery will have up to 700 bar pressure capability, which will ensure impressive operating range. Cummins already made an agreement with several companies to test this new engine in real-life conditions. For example, one of the hydrogen engines will be used for front-discharge concrete mixer trucks from the Terex Advanced Commander Series. The company, called Edge Materials, will operate hydrogen-powered trucks in various environments, such as construction sites and other infrastructural projects, so we will have the opportunity to check the actual value of the new engine firsthand. Finally, there's a hydrogen supply company called PCC Hydrogen, which is known for its ultra-low carbon intensity hydrogen production. The Louisville-based company will supply hydrogen, so the whole testing process is going to be very environmentally friendly. Both of these engine designs can be great green alternatives, but both still require some kind of energy consumption. One still burns gasoline, while the other one requires a lot of energy to store hydrogen. But what if we tell you that there's an engine that needs nothing more than pure air? How many of you have heard of such an engine? Let us know in the comments. GM looks back for solution. Until recently, GM was one of those companies strongly convinced of an all-electric future. But with the recent fall of the market growth, their plan to become all-electric in a decade or so has fallen apart. Now, it's obvious that, like many other companies that pushed EVs too hard, they will have to start working on alternatives. Mary Barra already announced that new hybrid vehicles are in development, but the company may have something much better. If you're old enough to remember the 1960s, you probably know about the famous air car that General Motors presented in 1966. That model drew so much attention, but it was still way too early for mass production. Meanwhile, various companies, including GM, have been working on its perfection, and it looks like that day has almost come. Over the last few years, the company worked hard on new EV technologies, but a compressed air engine was in the works too, so now various sources suggest that this engine could finally find its place in one of the production models. With its design, it definitely has the potential to impose itself not just as an alternative to EVs, but to classic internal combustion engines as well. Now, you probably wonder, what's the deal with this one? What's so special about this engine? Well, the thing is that this engine doesn't need fuel or any kind of power to work. Instead, all it needs is compressed air. In terms of overall design, this engine isn't much different compared to a common gas-powered unit. Pistons are there to do the job, but in this case, there's no need for sparks and explosion. Instead, the air is compressed and stored in a tank or reservoir, and then when the compressed air gets released, it expands with such a force that it can easily move a piston or even a turbine. So what the released air does is that it creates a force that pushes against the piston and moves it. This this creates mechanical energy that can be used to move cars or various kinds of machinery. 
And you know what's the best thing about all this? It's an unparalleled level of sustainability. Because once the used air does its job, it's just once again in the atmosphere, so the cycle can start again over and over endlessly. But sustainability isn't the only great thing about this engine design. It's also the fact that air engines are very simple. Its design is pretty straightforward, so besides environmental friendliness, they also offer impressive reliability and durability. So the only challenge engineers are currently facing is to make it more energy efficient. Once they achieve that, the sky is the limit, because we'll be able to run our cars on nothing but air. Now that's the kind of zero emissions we should talk about. What do you think about these three engine types? Which one has the best chance to enter mass production first? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you next time.